Stop that. Stop that. Stop that. Uh, yeah, yeah. I hear him chat to the noise. Move too quick, can't stop for the talking. I hear him chat with the Walking, yeah. Just too sharp with the prize. White girls let it tell me I'm awesome, yeah. Hot like fire on the pan. If you wanna touch my please use caution. Call like zero degree. I'm out the cage, gotta let out the peace. Revolutionary guy, let out the streets. Locked in a cage, I'ma let out the let out the let out the let out the, let out the sheets. We came for one man, forget my peace. You take the west side, take on the east. I'ma put him in the cage, never let out the let out the let out the. Yeah. I hear him chat to the noise. Move too quick, can't stop for the talking. I hear him chat with the boys. Not so tough, but man's keep walking. Yeah, just too sharp with the prize. My girls better tell me I'm awesome. Yeah, hot like fire on the pan. If you wanna touch my feet. Stop that. Stop that. Stop that. I really do enjoy the way that the money is pouring into what used to be amateur sports and NIL and the chaos that it is causing. Uh, over uh, the weekend, Jack Golke, I think we all discovered him at the same time, plays for Oakland, comes in off the bench, does nothing but shoot. He makes 10 threes on three dribbles. And in the sport, in WNBA, NBA, college basketball, in the last 25 years, according to OptiStats, there are only two times that someone has come off the bench and shot 20-plus threes and no twos in a game. Both times, it's Jack Golke. And TurboTax decided to capitalize on this so immediately because they were afraid that Golke would immediately get eliminated, which he did, yeah. that they did a, you know, they just did an NIL deal with him. Golke spent the weekend just signing NIL deals. But this right here is absurdly funny. He can't even bo be bothered to have the time to get to the gym. He's clearly in a hotel ballroom. I'm going to guess Radisson Inn carpet. 1980s was the last time it was changed. And here we go. Jack Golke uh, sh just doing a commercial for TurboTax. Me and my team got to the next round by making all our moves count. Just like TurboTax, who makes all your off-court moves count this tax season. Uh. I mean, come on. Uh. Come on. That's right, Billy. That's the correct response. When he hit the Look ceiling. Dribbling on carpet. He, he's in a hotel ballroom. He's dribbling on carpet. Yet you at least got to give TurboTax their money's worth by going to a gym. Have there been advances in anything less than in carpet? Like, what was the last carpet advance? I'm going to guess easier to clean. I know uh, there are very expensive kinds of rugs. So, Oh, well, I, look, they've taped down. Like, if you look, they taped down a three-point line on the carpet. <laughs> look, there's a white tape three-point line on that video. Now, that's that, production value. That he's yeah. running around to shoot. Look, yeah. watch him, watch him. And there's actually a white court also. Look, they made a court out of tape yeah. on that carpet. It looks like he's in a gym. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. It does not look like he's in a gym. Uh, Mike Ryan uh, found all of the basketball middling. He called it March Midness. I will say that the NCAA tournament has never been about good basketball. It's just about, hey, please give me some close basketball. Because even, I mean, maybe when you're going back to the time of Tim Duncan and, and someone like Tim Duncan will play for four years, but now the basketball, what you're watching is basically being able to bet. You saw the numbers. I've told you before that I don't trust the ratings on anything, but the numbers being distributed suggest that more people watch the average game in the first round than ever have. 8.3 million per game. 8.3 million is what the numbers are that they're giving you, and it's just because it's action. It's a good year to have the take that March Madness isn't exactly what people hype it up to be. Because March, as you mentioned, it's about moments. And there haven't really been moments. You had a crazy three to end regulation last night. You basically had good games to start the experience on your Friday and one solid one to, to end your experience. But a whole lot of bad basketball and not a lot of memorable results it is just a fifth time in history that all one and two seeds have advanced to the sweet 16 so you haven't had real signature upsets the darling cinderellas are pretty much gone by now so it, it hasn't been a great tournament by any real stretch of the imagination I, I think it's been a return to the norm i mean last year 
you had three outliers in the men's final four, and, and that's not, you can't count on that happening. And now, you know, uh, for me, the NCAA tournament is something I really pay attention to now when it's at the Sweet 16, and, and there are no real Cinderella's left, and unless you count NC State as an 11 seed. And, and on the women's side, there's no real Cinderella. That's the Cinderella fallacy, I call it. We love Cinderella. You do? We love Cinderella. You have a name yes, for it. Yeah, and you've got to capitalize the F as well. The Cinderella fallacy is that that's why we all love March Madness so much. We're enthralled with the brackets because when Oakland beats Kentucky, oh, my God, we're apoplectic with joy, knowing that Oakland's going to lose in the next game and that Jack Golkey, who looks like he's 38 years old, is going to disappear after cashing on NIL and he's will not, never hear He's from not going to disappear. I'm going to remember this. I'm going to know where I was when I saw this commercial for Jack <laughs> Golkey in a ballroom. Uh, what, what hotel do you imagine that, that is? Because the, ca- the carpet is giving off something, right? That carpet. Uh, burgundy, it fe- it doesn't feel like a new design. It right. feels like a carpet that has been there for at least two decades. Yeah, it smells, that carpet. I don't know if it smells. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can smell it through the TV. It's bad. It's been there since the 1960s, that carpet. And that design, what is that, a paisley design? I, I don't know what I'm looking at there. It's, is that a flame? What is that that we're seeing? It's crazy. I do miss March Madness creating stars. Jack Golke, there, there's usually like two or three of, of Jack Golke. And this year, at least on the men's side, there isn't. On the women's side of the bracket, there are names establishing themselves like Audie Crooks and whatnot. But that's because generally the audience is less familiar with them. Uh, but there have been... It's been pretty chalky on both brackets, both the men's and women's, and it's been disappointing. I feel like your enthusiasm, Mike, would be a little different if there was a certain blue blood team in the tournament. Yeah, no doubt. But they they were also upsetting teams. You know, they were they were a lower seed last year, both the men's and women's, and and they upset top seeds on their way to March, uh, uh, to, on their way to the final four, and that's what March is supposed to be about, at least to me. Otherwise, you just get a bunch of boring games and. Even if you follow the sport, which I follow the sport a little bit more now because, as you mentioned, I'm a blue blood, it go, it bucks against the trends that you'd been hearing all year. For example, the last three years, we've been hearing how the ACC, noted famous basketball conference, is actually overrated and doesn't stack up with the better conferences, the Big Ten in particular. Right now, presently, in the Sweet 16, there are more ACC schools than the Big Ten has had in the Sweet 16 in the last three years combined. The ACC continually bucks against this narrative nationally that they are an overrated conference and they always have Final Four representation. Taylor says you're walking dangerously close to the line that gets your blue blood card revoked. I have in front of me a news story that if it had been played in the tournament, people would care. Unfortunately, it involves the Tasmania Jack Jumpers. But the way that one of their games ended over the weekend, Delvadova turned the ball over in, in Australia at the end, and then uh, Jack McVeigh came down the court and shot just over half court, made a three-pointer to, to win the game. If that had happened in the NCAA tournament, that ending, um, it's one of those things that we would remember forever. Like one of those games that you remember where it is that you were because you can't believe that you saw something. And we all look like Stan Van Gundy during that game last year when he's on the sidelines and he's disoriented. Uh, but unfortunately, it involved Tasmania. But if, <laughs> if, but if it had been in the tournament and it had been the, the – that, that if Tasmania had advanced on a half-court three – toward the buzzer, Mm -hmm. uh, we'd be talking about it. But those games this weekend weren't any good. And Zach Eady doesn't have any actual enemies. So uh, Purdue has made one of me for calling him a plague. Purdue fans are very mad at me because their offense was very good, at least in part because he gets a lot of free throws because no one can get him out of the key. And there is a place, by the way, that you can accuse me of hypocrisy because – my friends were arguing with me this week, and they're like, why don't you like him? If someone is bigger and faster than other people, you have no problems with them. But just because someone is bigger than everyone else, you have a problem with them? And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's the reason. I don't like that what he's doing in basketball is something that feels like no one can move him out of the keys to physically strong. All right, he didn't cheat, though, to get like that. I uh, mean. Correct, but I, I, just don't like, I just don't like watching it. But the It feels hypo- like cheating sometimes, but no, he, de- he didn't cheat. And, yeah, their head coach actually said something that I thought was 
a, a general criticism that you were lumped into that if you think that he's good just because he's big, you you don't know ball. Oh, but I don't I don't think that. I know he's good. And it's not just because he's big. He's got a skill set, but the fact that he's stronger than everybody is the reason that he's able to get where he wants in the key, and they have to foul him. But the hypocrisy that I'm guilty of is that I enjoyed watching this weekend Audi Crooks of Iowa State, uh, even though she's stronger than everybody physically, but I love the heavier basketball player. I've always loved the heavy basketball player, and the hypocrisy that you've caught me in is I'd be totally fine with Zach Eady if he was 150 more pounds and flabby. <laughs> yeah. If it was more body yeah. fat, I would love him. Yeah. Like it, it has nothing to do with the fact that he's stronger it's than everybody. It has everything to do with that he's proportional. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. If, if he were just, if he were 150 pounds heavier, I would be rooting for him <laughs> and be if he was like big baby robinson but seven five big baby davis big baby davis excuse me we, we all love the large Pine. out of shape athlete we love the defensive tackle returning a fumble same theory there yeah this has been a, a good year to have the take that march madness is overrated that take stands up against like more memorable March Madnesses where you do have those moments. I, I think that you go through a lot, you sift through it, as we made the minor analogy last week, and you get a couple of good nuggets. This year, my take is really aging well just because there hasn't been that. We're all just still trying to chase the ghosts of Jack Golke. All right, but can you guys uh, can you guys help me with this part? Because I do feel part of this is simply packaging and nostalgia. This is minor league basketball. These are human beings who are learning how to play basketball. Some of them are very young, and they're going to school for one year to learn how to play basketball. I'm not interested in the G League either, but if you make it in March, give me giant stakes and tell me at every turn that everybody's going to be watching and we can bet all day and everyone's going to be caring, I might be more interested. Let's go ahead and play that uh, that video from Australia so you could see what it is that I'm talking about. This is Matthew Delavadova inbounding the ball. And he throws it uh, away, and here we go. We're going down the court. Imagine this at the end of March Madness, and at the end of one of the game, <laughs> one of the games. Nice. Totally absurd from half court, making a game winner from half court. I believe what you're watching is minor league basketball. There is a crazy amount to talk about. Rare is the day that we come in here and have this much stuff that is rich in societal interesting and billy gill is in the big boy seat with mike ryan literally almost breathing on his neck <laughs> jim nance in the crowd billy is everything okay you're not in front of the microphone right now and i want to talk to you well, for i have a to second. turn on yours and greg's mic so i'm putting little arrows here to make sure that i turn on the right one there's a lot going on mm -hmm. okay bridges so, are falling all right yes thing. well yes wow. so uh, billy not to make excuses no. <laughs> <laughs> billy is in charge on what is i'm gonna say a day of intersection where we have a whole lot of things happening uh, that are uh, one of them is calamitous okay overnight a bridge collapsing in Baltimore when a cargo ship hits it uh, the video will be everywhere by the time you're listening to this uh, we're making a choice not to show it uh, just because and Greg Cody doesn't agree with this and I don't blame him for not agreeing with this uh, just because we don't want to show death what feels like death in real time while family members are still searching for the dead but uh, I don't blame you if you disagree with that and say look when 9-11 happened, the, the video of that is, is something that needs to be in front of people because you have to jar people into incidents that show you when, if you want to make this an infrastructure story instead of a death story, none of us have ever seen that. None of all of us would fear the idea, wait a minute, I've got to be safer than a cargo ship can help hit my bridge and all, and, and I'm going to lose, grandma's going to lose her life just, just driving to get over to see me. Yeah, I mean, families who lost a loved one are not going to feel any better by the result of this, but eventually you have to figure out negligence. You know, how much blame was there on the cargo ship? Was there an infrastructure problem? I mean, was it an old bridge in disrepair? disrepair? We don't know all that, and it's all happening right now, but I think it's, for me, it's necessary to show the video once and not twice, as you would with a, a calamitous NFL knee injury that's so gruesome you almost don't want to watch it. But maybe you have okay, to show it once. But, Greg, we have been talking, okay, about the deterioration of media and how it is that the inter Internet consumes 
everything. You understand right now that if I put that video in front of everybody, anybody, they would watch it many, many times because we've never seen that. And so news entities all over will show it all day today. You like, look. I didn't even want to start with the idea of this being a moral stand. There are just a bunch of people dead right now, yeah. and there are all over the world. All over the world, this is happening. On, we, If you want to check in on Gaza, if you want to check in on Ukraine, there's death happening everywhere. And, uh, you know, faces of death was something in my youth that was, uh, you know, televised showing of death in real time but if you went to bed last night and you woke up this morning and you have someone you love in baltimore you wonder if they were on that bridge at that moment and we're supposed to be safer than that but this isn't an infrastructure story right now today it's just we don't know how many are dead right now as we say this and there might be some they're they're you know they might still be looking for people but also adjacent to that in pop culture and in sport, you've got the internet gathering around Diddy yesterday. And I don't think we've ever seen stuff like this, right? Because your childhood disappears with Bill Cosby. What the hell is that? And you're watching Quiet on Set on Max, and you see that Nickelodeon was, that Nickelodeon was, like, there was pedophiles on the loose. Like, everywhere you look, people are gathering to look at the dirty stuff. And yesterday, what we were watching is an icon from many people's childhood, a mogul. There's video of him w walking around what looks like an airport scared. And at that moment, we're all sort of wondering, like we did with O.J. Simpson, is all of these, all of what is happening right now in the federal raids of his homes that leads to his kids in handcuffs is accusations that if proven, which he's denied, and uh, it needs to be said that he's denied right now, as we see. But everyone's gathered around watching whether is Diddy about to lose all his freedom or is he about to try to do what Russell Simmons did and go to Bali and get out of town on a private plane because he can. Can money escape? Are we watching, in the Internet age, what was watching O.J. Simpson on television mm -hmm. 20 years ago? So that's what it felt, right? That's what the Internet was doing yesterday, correct? Absolutely, especially with his kids being handcuffed and, and put out his, his Miami house. That was very jarring to see. Mm -hmm. You feel me? It was. Yeah, that, that's what really hit me. When, when you see the two kids, they look like teenagers in handcuffs. It's like, wow, this is so real. And now, unfortunately, there, there will be a presumption of guilt. Right? Okay, everything here is alleged. But yeah, yeah there, there's, there's a bunch of sure. allegations that uh, his children were all implicated in, in this ring and social media sleuths started digging up videos uh, of women that, uh, uh, di of young women oh. that uh, Diddy claimed to have adopted. And so there's all, there's overwhelming circumstantial evidence. There's over, an overwhelming number of of allegations in the court of public opinion. Many of these have water, oh, hold water. Uh, Diddy has denied the, seemingly a mountain of allegations against him, and now the optics of him seemingly on the run to add to all of this. I don't want to get to the sports stories just yet because we've got two giant sports betting scandals, and the, I think the lesser of them, or certainly the less obvious of them, involves Otani. The less obvious of them, because I was just presented with something so staggeringly stupid that I'm like, that's the most obvious, alleged, <laughs> but that's the most obvious Man. betting crime I've ever seen, wandering off to the locker room with eye issues, as opposed to just running around on the court, falling down, fouling out, doing something that would allow you the deniability. We'll get to that story in a second. <laughs> For lack of a better phrase. Hedging with allegedly on this particular scandal. Oh, man. And allegedly is holding up a lot on its, its shoulders I, right now. I believe I will present to the audience what I believe to be the single, I mean, no innocent until proven guilty, the single most obvious betting crime an athlete has had since Bart Giamatti died after punishing Pete Rose forever for gambling on baseball. Like, I want to get to what the last 40 years have wrought because this is just the very beginning of you seeing the dirty underbelly of how many people compete and bet and can't control what gets into your locker room when money's involved. Mm -hmm. And the gates have opened on this. 
But let's stay with Diddy for just a second here because this is nearby. Star Island is right here. It, his life has been here. His, his mother lives here. He was here all the time. He was here all the time during the most debaucherous of where it is that fame and power grabs people and the temptations of Miami come and all of a sudden your life is totally out of control because you're so powerful all the vanities are huge. The Kardashians can create that into a billion dollar empire. You're a mogul on top of mogul. And it made me think of Vince McMahon when I think of the allegations here. How powerful people get to a place. And I'm not saying that all powerful people are, are some version of perverted, but there, there are so many, I'm gonna say perverts, who are powerful people, it makes me wonder, like, do you get to a level of fame where, whether you're Vince McMahon or this, the heights of pleasure are like just, none of us would even understand it because you're just an abuser of power and part of, like, again, all allegations. But that's what he, like, when Russell Simmons is hiding in Bali, and he's hiding, and we all know it, we're like, oh, you did those things and you're hiding. And, you know, he denies them and allegedly. Yeah, I mean, this story... But we're watching yesterday thinking we were going to see the O.J. Simpson thing again, correct? And people are tracking private planes now as well. Mm -hmm. And we know what about where he is as we speak. Right, the fire alarm is... is I know, I'm live. Bad time. I'm li I know, time I'm live now, alarm. though. I can't, I can't stop what we're doing <laughs> just because there's a fire alarm. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah. It's Billy, is everything surrounded. okay? You just pretend that's not there and keep going. Yeah, I don't Private play, I mean... It's piercing yeah. into my brain. I know it's yeah. tough to do our job. What are we talking about? I don't want to be a Monday morning quarterback on this, but love air. <laughs> Someone should have, you know, <laughs> like, hey, what's going on? Right? Wrong? Can we, uh, I'll turn this off. Can we uh, <laughs> pick apart the easy one? And just head into the John Tate Porter one. Can we start there? You want to start with the sports scandal? <laughs> well, yeah, well, because that one seems like the easiest one to tackle because this one seems like the most obvious. Whenever you have, uh, thank you very much for the warning. Maybe we should get out of here. Let's investigate everybody. But uh, when a, a, a prop on John Tate Porter is the single biggest money maker in the NBA, uh, according to DraftKings Sportsbook that night. We got something to look into, especially when the player willingly takes himself out of a game and all the unders cash. And I've been wronged. I bet on John T. Porter like two times his ass went under. <laughs> God damn it. Salute to John T. Porter, but lock his ass up. How, how did everybody know? Like, who, like, was there a group chat? Like, how did every like yeah. all the gamblers got together and told each other? There's like, a TV show called World's Dumbest Criminals. Dare I say, if it was still on air, my boy John Tate would be front and center. All right, yeah. let me explain to the audience that may not be up to the details. I discovered who this person was yesterday. I learned that he was the brother, uh, is the brother of Michael Porter. I learned that he played for the Raptors. I was not f familiar with his game, and I learned this name because it just came across with betting scandal. There's been an investigation into betting scandal. And I'm like, okay, we better get used to those, right? I don't know who this player is, but there will be many names coming in the future, and this will be the first. This will, this will be much worse, much worse than Calvin Ridley. Uh, this is so obvious that that career is over. Like this, this right, Well, he's also of a uh, stature, uh, where you could say his career is that's, over. Yeah, that's correct, sure. but uh, we all discovered together, correct, that he looked like not like Michael Porter, but like a 2000s rom-com of what a basketball player would look like if you went to Hollywood to go get a basketball <laughs> player, correct? Absolutely. Love and basketball, yeah. extra. We, 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 perfect. We everything. agree, yes. And now, the, but the thing is, that by itself, scandalous enough, you could say, oh, sh this is going to be, this. people paying attention will know that this is worse than Otani, no matter what the details are on Otani, because this is just so very obvious. Uh, allegedly. There's, none of this is proven. Allegedly. But this is all allegedly. Allegedly, okay, 10, 000, larger than $10,000 uh, bets came in on his unders in random games. Yeah. Like, brother, the dumbest criminals. No, the, the details. <laughs> allegedly. Juju, no, uh, just say no. no one can add eBay to this group chat. This would have made this all go away. The Free eBay, by the way. We piled it on at this point. Yeah. I need the audience to understand that what John Tay Porter did was allegedly. Okay. Allegedly. 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 Has did. he denied? He did. Allegedly. Or has he been like, ah, you got me? <laughs> not, not yet, but we all got you. Do, you. do you realize that crimes are rarely solved by the internet quite this <laughs> successfully? <laughs> it where it's like, there's no need for allegedly here. We all see what happened. This is obvious, but I've got to get through yeah. the details Not of the Kirk allegedly. Not since Ramis's likes has uh, a, a Twitter case been this open and shut for me.
This is we what, can see those. Th Kurt. <laughs> this is what I'm going to enjoy about this time, Greg, in in journalism, as gambling, the gambling money is propping up all of sports media content right now. Like all of it yeah. is being held up. And when you invite, as the leagues did, because I, I remember when it happened, right? Fantasy leagues had become so so omnipresent. Europe was already doing this. But seeing the name DraftKings on the basketball court was like, whoa, this is gambling, right? Gambling. So sports, sports in America is now going to normalize gambling. And then the pandemic came and then oil wells everywhere. And the gambling money is holding a lot of people up, like industries, because the gambling money is something that makes March Madness, even though you don't know the names, they're just uniforms running up and down. The average game is getting 8 million viewers because that's gambling on television running up and down. And so the corrosive elements of that are, the dangers to the integrity of sports are, that your players can be bought, yeah. your referees can be bought. And in this case, these are the details. And they matter because they're this obvious. This guy didn't do us the courtesy of just wandering around, bumping into people and fouling out so you could deny that you were throwing the game. This guy went out with an under, he went out with an eye injury, and then the bets start pour, the pets have poured in to make it to, to make this guy's under and everything. The single biggest moneymaker. On DraftKings. That's the most suspicious thing in the history of American gambling. Yeah. It was a re-aggravation of his eye injury. Yeah. So he had an eye injury prior, <laughs> too, if you want to play the alleged. People probably yeah. knew he has an eye thing. Any little thing could re-aggravate it. Yeah. It was Safe a re-aggravation that he was gambling again. <laughs> Allegedly. Yeah. Yeah. I Allegedly. learned yesterday that Michael Porter had a brother. So like, I, I do think it's pretty right. sus that this is the top uh, moneymaker when it comes to DraftKings Sportsbook. And we should say that we are presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. And there's a lot of people yeah. that have opined on social media, a lot of people that also have their own conflicts of interest, by the way, uh, taken to the pulpit and saying, well, what did you expect to happen when sports gambling became legal in this uh, country? And I will say, is there an uptick in, uh, as we saw in Iowa with both those college football teams? Yeah, maybe some of this is a byproduct of uh, – sports gambling becoming more legal. Uh, I would say what is uh, certainly increased as a result of sports betting becoming legal is you finding out about it. And these sports books who are league partners reporting their data to these league partners. It's how Calvin Ridley got pinched. It's certainly how DraftKings apparently shared this very suspicious data with its league partner. If you think that this is now just an invention Fixing games and t and players taking a dive. If you think that allegedly. this is allegedly a new thing because all of a sudden a DK logo is on a court, you are so naive. So, so, so naive. This thing has been happening all over the world, and now we at least have these entities cooperating to report some of this stuff. Mm. Then they rigged the 1917 World Series. <laughs> Allegedly. They did. Yeah, the, I, I want to just step up scandal. and say one time, I have never been prouder to represent DraftKings Sportsbook. They sniffed that rat out and they <laughs> called his ass out. Salute to DraftKings. We love you. I do I do want to say allegedly. one thing, though. No, no salute. To, no, what do you mean, allegedly? I mean, yeah, the they're heroes, out. allegedly. And that is our unbiased spin on all of this. If there is one thing to take away from this story, completely unbiased, it's that DraftKings Sportsbook is the best. Yeah. But, no allegedly there. But <laughs> none whatsoever. If you were to bet on your overs, I feel like that should be okay. Okay, well, you've taken the hot take out to the place I'm not prepared to take it right like now. Like, if I'm betting on my overs, <laughs> okay, I'm trying look, to play well, ooh, right? Just hold on. I think Reese Davis would call that a risk-free investment, my friends. <laughs> okay. By the way, that cashed. Everyone that wants to give Reese. It cashed. All right. Let's normalize, please. If, if we're going to normalize it, let's normalize it. Okay, fine. Do I want to join you on the limb of, all right, everyone who wants to bet the overs on themselves, 
have at it. We don't care about the integrity of this. You're just betting on your own confidence. Right. America believes in you bet on yourself. Let's make that be the rule. Just you can't bet against yourself. Exactly yeah. right. There's then nothing more integrous than going after something yourself and then doing it and then reaping the benefits of that. <laughs> well, I don't know friend. if that, he I, said integrous. I don't, I don't know if that is a word, word, but it should be a word. Is absolutely it a word. should it be a word. No, that's a, a car. Word. Okay. I, uh, I, <laughs> I had a very long drive home. And on my long drive home last Let's evening, up. I decided to fix sports. <laughs> and wow. so, uh, number one, this one's free, Mike, uh, by the okay, way. I, you, fix it, I fix the NBA. I fix the NBA. You don't want to maybe not, hold this to June? No, no, no. I fix, no, I fix, fix it. sports today. Uh, Mike, Here it is. Mike, okay. hold on. All right. Here, you want to know? Hold this on. one's free. I, I, do, I do want I want to know the only thing. I, I, I just want you to make a decision between two things. Because I do want this content. I think it is good content. But what Billy said there in making fun of Tony, that Integris is the name of a car. It is an amazing Man, name. it sounds an, like it's a word. No, no, it's absolutely a word. If you want to look on Oxford, on any dictionary.com, it's a word. Sorry, Integris. guys. Integris. Idiots. Wow. Yeah. Dorks. I would okay. buy that car. Okay. Yeah. Uh, also, I believe it was... Sounds reliable. I think, yes. What else is it? Because the Integris, it, it is, it is uh, not, it doesn't use gas, right? The Integris right. Uh, preserves the environment. Somebody's got to call a car an Integris that, that is just economically friendly and also environmentally friendly. Yeah. Or a medication. It also sounds yeah, like a pill you could, have. Yeah. yeah. It also sounds like a deer, lion, hybrid, some kind of Integris. Ooh, yeah, <laughs> maybe. I'm workshopping it right now. It sounds like something Stu Gatz would, uh, would have like the antidote to. Like that he would or not. Or be allergic he'd to. He'd be allergic yeah, to. Yeah, he'd be allergic <laughs> to it. A allergic to integri integrity. Yeah. Uh, Mike, you were saying. I fixed the NBA on my drive home. <laughs> We're all frustrated. We, we said, let's change the, the dimensions of the court. I understand that that's tricky uh, with the set uh, uh, infrastructures of certain places. We're not all frustrated, okay? There are plenty of people who like basketball just the way that it I is. I love it more than I've ever loved it. Like, wow. we're not all frustrated. No, I understand. But uh, let, me, let me break it down for you. There's a very clear trend when it comes to NBA basketball and it's not a good one when it comes to people tuning in i, I think the viewers are, are weighing in by switching the channel that they don't love this style of the game and you can romanticize post play and you could watch videos of the 80s and say for real this is what we're uh what we're missing no but the way that the game is going it's less visually appealing to some and i understand where you're coming from where you like guys bombs away here, here here's my solution bigger balls wow Hey yo, smaller rims. Yeah. Wow. Make, smaller rims. Make no no no. This this is <laughs> easy. A carnival. Okay, okay. Why, why no, smaller no, rims? No no no. no. Bigger, balls, bigger balls, balls. You can you can almost fit two in. balls in a one one rim. Yeah. You can almost no, no, fit. No, you two. can fit. But not like side by side. You gotta yeah, yeah. move it around. Yeah. People don't realize. You, you, just make it bigger by like a centimeter and let's see what happens. But if you, if you make, make the it rims bigger by a centimeter. smaller, to Greg's point, you have less things to adjust. Yeah, right? but no, exactly. I no, you, you're only fixing the ball. That, yeah, keep but the you have dimensions. To fix a lot of keep balls. the rim. Keep the rim. You can, there's all sorts of different size balls. The WNBA use a different size ball. Swish. Yeah, make a bigger ball. Like a beach ball. Just a slightly. No, no, no. Almost imperceptible. A slightly bigger ball by like a centimeter. And see what happens. What if you tell people you made a bigger ball, but you never did? So then in their head, I mean, if it's just centimeters bigger, you wouldn't know the difference, right? But once you know it's a bigger ball, you'd be like, ah, I don't know about this. So it's like a placebo effect with basketballs where you just tell everybody, hey, you know what? This year, the balls are bigger. And it's the exact oh, yeah. same balls, and then see what happens. It's such a, it's such a good advertising campaign, we, right? And we this got year, bigger balls. balls. Bigger balls. <laughs> like, oh, Look, yeah, if you dude. understand what I came up with on my drive home, they would have paid a consulting firm seven million dollars for I just make the ball a little bit bigger. I Middle. can't wait to reach that point in my career. <laughs> yeah. Consulting, what a racket! <laughs> no, bigger balls. Well, all right, there's a there's an easier way to fix the NBA. Okay, and and I just thought of this off the top of my head. It makes so much sense. Shorten the season. Limit three point shots. Hmm. You put a whole new strategy hmm. into okay. the game. Yeah. If you, you know how you, you know how you limit three point three shots like this. with a bigger with ball. A bigger ball. Okay, okay. I, I'm just going to stop everyone now. Okay, because we've got plenty to talk about today, and I'm I'm now officially mad that Mike Ryan has decided to fix basketball. How this does a bigger ball fix 
three point shots because less shots go in, oh, and so it'll naturally legislate that. fewer shots yeah. being taken from outside, and people will want to get a little closer to the rim because their margin for error has now shrunk because the ball is a little bit bigger. <laughs> but so guess what, Zach Eady, you now have a place in the NBA. But Greg wants to literally legislate how many yes. three pointers you could take. You'd even have it on a board, and every time they take one, an X exactly. goes through it, you, uh, like timeouts. I'm not sure what the number should be. In my mind, it's ten. Yeah, they got it's three 10. three three pointers yeah, left in the game. Both shot use twenty. Them? This save is so them. convoluted. Mm -hmm. Save them. No, if you just make the ball a little bit yep. bigger, it does everything. It does all the work for mm -hmm. us. Nobody I'm sees that change. Side. I'm on Dan's side. I do know that no matter how big you make the ball, the Celtics will find a way to blow a damn lead when I'm in Miami. If you look back on the track record, if you see me in Miami, John Tay Porter, I see you out there, bet the Celtics to lose when I'm in Miami because they will lose and crap the bed. I bring my Celtics jersey every time to wear down here, and I can never wear it without being embarrassed. Wow. And, salute. And look, not you can't do a salute at the end of that. Please salute and bit, brother. We, please, please salute, salute the bigger right balls yeah, idea because I think the bigger salute. balls idea is a good idea. He yeah. is pushing that idea, man. Bigger you don't, balls. You, bigger don't, balls. you don't. You didn't even get to how I fix gambling in sports. We'll get to it. There's time. You don't. You don't neuter the hater that that you sound like. Oh, whoa, wow. whoa! Hey, allegedly, yo. allegedly. Okay, here we are. Wow. Deny those allegations. <laughs> I deny 100 percent the allegations. Wow. With a salute. Hater. Salute to Dan Levitar and that beautiful jacket, by the way. Oh, Hair perfectly nice coiffed as well. We'll be back after these messages, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to get to everything today. I never say that. I, I don't think it's possible. We have not even done what happened with Otani yesterday. The gambling controversy that I'm guessing, and please correct me because I don't know how this is being covered. Otani is hugely famous, and yes, $4 million dollars. $4.5 million with a cover-up and the hugely famous player, that seems like a gambling scandal. Hell, last week I said if the worst of that is true, that'll be the biggest gambling <laughs> one of the biggest sports scandals we've ever seen. And then John Tay Porter happened. I'm like, nope, that's a bigger one. He's not as famous. Now, obviously, if a famous person did it that way. But it, in terms of, a, of an obvious link to, ooh, this person, if if I were Otani's people, I would throw this guy. You guys think the economy would just bury a translator. Like, if I was thinking about the most mafioso allegedly you could put together to protect the economy of Otani, I'd, I'd, I'd call and ask if Michael Porter has a brother <laughs> to create this controversy that's so stupid, but... So obviously guilty. Allegedly. I do not need a trial. Oh. I don't need to live in, live in an American system of government. I don't need an explanation. All of it allegedly, allegedly, denial allegedly. But holy sh if I didn't know better, I could now, by association, say, so that's why Michael Porter played that way in the finals. The worst starter on the floor for Denver and Miami. Now we're talking. Oh, whoa. That is a bridge whoa. too far. Allegedly. I don't whoa. have right, I mean, yeah, the right speculation hat. Okay, that. I have it. Hold on a second. Time to throw away all journalistic credibility and get reckless. Here is something we like to call reckless speculation. You're good. Thank you. I need that. I can't well, do it. Then. I don't. Yeah. Nobody was going to do it. Genuinely looking for like, Greg I, 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 to, somebody, to play the role. Uh, somebody to tell me that I, I, that I was good. I'm here. surprised you're bringing Michael into it. Yeah. Well, to be Leaks honest, well, he hasn't I'm yet. Not. We're about to get reckless. Too far. Okay. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. What's okay. the point of being reckless unless you're going to be yeah. reckless? Go all the way, man. It, do it. it. Speculate, Dano. Well, just tell him he's good. Just say it. Just well, Juju said it, but I feel like hold on. Well, you need that chair to say you're good. Yeah, you're good. Go. Thank you. Yeah. No problem. In the finals last year, Denver crushed Miami. Michael Porter was the worst starter in that series by leaps and bounds. I know this because before that series, one of my expert opinions was, you all are going to learn how good a basketball player Michael Porter is. And then we watched the finals together, and none of us learned that, and he made me embarrassed. So you Embar got a grudge. So, so I have got a vindictive grudge. My bias, that's right. This is, I allege to be a journalist. I allege, I allege, I allege. Allegedly. But I, too, bought by DraftKings. Yeah. How much I, money did you lose betting on Michael Porter? Well, I bought, this is the thing. I went Michael Porter over on six and a half rebounds or something. And then I'm looking out there, and he's just wandering around and missing shots, and then it's two rebounds. I'm like, you're not trying, yeah. but I can't prove it. Yeah, but you're not bitter, though. But you're not that bad, yeah. but right. I can't prove it. I can't. This guy can got me. It. This guy. 
allegedly, might have taught his brother how to do this <laughs> poorly, <laughs> poorly. But oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! Take the music no. back up. No, 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 it's all. No, it's, all, it's no. It's all reckless and it's irresponsible and it's missed like 30 straight threes in the finals, by the way. It's so bad. As if you were shooting with bigger balls. On multiple but Thursday imagine. Thunders, not crash the boards. I mean, neither here nor there, but I'm 16 and Gotta three. Gotta follow your and shot. Michael Porter Jr. are two of them. You can't miss 30 threes if you're only allowed to take 10. Yes, thank you. Allegedly. Limit the threes. Okay, I will not fix basketball today with Billy Gill. You're and not trying. Well, we already We're going to be perfectly it. on it. We're trying it's to fix it. There's only man. one person a, fitting out. I have a stamp that says bigger balls. Limit the games. Limit the Seven threes. million dollars, please. Mm-hmm. I have a stamp that says fixed. Whoa. Uh, okay. Which well, way? Oh, hold on. <laughs> Which yeah. way? Oh, wait a yeah. second. What was fixed? That's a, a good stamp. <laughs> I like that both ways, that stamp where we could just, man, you don't think we can do a segment every day just called <laughs> <laughs> fixed allegedly 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 every day something in sports <laughs> but let's if we're gonna let the walls come crumbling down then let's let them come crumbling down the gambling money is everywhere it is <laughs> this is just the start of it Otani some nobody uh, over D- D- Dan keep your eye on the bigger ball yeah and don't put this on the companies exactly right. I say as someone that is totally unbiased, yeah, exactly. look at the perpetrators. Yeah. Okay, I will entertain. I want to get to these other things, but I will entertain your bigger ball just this way, just in order to. I don't. Thank you. <laughs> like you guys are minimizing my bigger ball thing, and I really don't appreciate it because I haven't heard that anywhere. Make the ball a little bit bigger. Imagine that. What I what I'm telling. Look, there are any number of times I get dragged into God knows what sewer on the Internet because somebody on this show has had an opinion that then gets attached to me. Warren Sapp wants to kill me because he thinks that I think he has bad breath. Allegedly. Allegedly. I've never said that. Allegedly. Stugatz has said that. Hmm. I your, you said it. Your, I am willing to endorse, <laughs> though. I usually avoid. I prevent. I try. I'm like, they said it. Not, well, it doesn't matter. In this instance, I am willing to endorse Mike Ryan's take 100% as fixing basketball. The, the, the one fixed stamp, not the other one we're talking about where the games are fixed. Oh, uh, the Jonte Porter stamp. A- yeah. Allegedly. The big ball theory that he throws out there has only one problem in it. Because these guys are such scientists about shooting, the one time they did try to change the ball just a little, there was a revolt by the players because yeah. shooters could no longer shoot. Yeah. So you want less scoring. I am not with a making ball. Swaggy P a scientist, just for the record. And I understand it was calamitous, but we have a problem here. Guys are chucking up 15 three point shots yeah. a game, and the audience has voted saying that that is threes. unappealing to the eye, and they are voting with a remote control. So, how do we legislate this <laughs> without putting in absolute, absolute limits like Greg Cody is recommending? Yeah. But, but why are you against that? Because not only does it uh, help what the problem is, it adds a whole new strategy to the game. It's communist, it's un American. <laughs> Let me shoot threes as much as I want for yeah. as long as I want with who I want to do it with. The US. Oh, we, 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 we don't limit. We, we explore our inhibitions wow. over here and do so. We, what is America here. like? Hedonism and big things. So be hedonistic with a bigger ball. Yeah, and how's that working, the hedonistic bigger things? How's that working I mean, we're the still NBA? on the metal stand when you look at the globe. Yeah. All right, so mm. I won't apologize for being on the metal stand. Mm, okay. He's not going to apologize for bigger balls. Right. He's not going to do it. Yeah. I'm going to apologize to the audience for not mentioning these six words in, what are we, 52 minutes in? Paige Bukers, Juju Watson, and the kid herself, Caitlin Clark. Phenomenal performance. You know what, yeah. Juju? You're Holy so damn, right about this. Them. Juju, I'm sorry. So let's, because this show, look at how male this show is right Bigger here. Bigger balls. Well, this is what I'm going to say. The advertising slogan, a big stamp on our show should be, for us and the NBA, it's hedonistic, bigger balls. But who's got bigger balls? The women. Well, they do. Fixed. Oh. <laughs> Caitlin Clark and her entire team. Yeah. Gutsy performance. Her last performance yes. in Iowa. Our sister Lucy was there. We might holler at her later in the oh. show. But, man, I, it was it was such a great team effort because the other team was West Virginia. They was playing their best game of the year, in my opinion. They had that look in their eyes. And then Caitlin Clark and them girls said, no, thank you. We're moving on. I saw that look. Can co-sign it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She looked at the crowd and said, 
explicit explicit word after explicit mm. word. Yeah, it's kind of weird. So like allegedly, internet sleuths are alleging that she said, "Shut the bleep up." Yeah, she but did. She, but I she thought. But no. she was at home. I saw it. Yeah. Wait a minute. Greg <laughs> saw it. Wait a minute. Greg saw it. We've got a journal. I've seen it. We've got Your eyes can lie. Your eyes can lie. Look at what's his name's brother. Allegedly. Yeah, but she was at home. She was playing at home. Why is she telling the home crowd to shut the bleep up? Because a West Virginia fan was was on her a little bit and. It's very, uh, you know, I'm not a lip reader. Very difficult to mistake that phrase. Very difficult to mistake Allegedly. that. It was pretty obvious. Allegedly. And, you what know, was the phrase? And then we'll, I'll try to throw you off by saying Shut the F up Whoa. was the phrase. Hmm. Might have been get the F up for the crowd, but mm-hmm. neither here nor there. Mm. That's not the interesting parts of what happened last night. Uh, Chris Cody wished for America to sweat last night. America sweat because mm-hmm. it was a close game. Yep. Uh, Caitlin was Clark was, uh, yep. because look, man. She's the biggest star in the sport, and the microscope is going to be on her in a way that now, if if you think politics aren't going to come to sports everywhere, watch what happens when uh, everything escalates here and she gets accused of either sore loser or dirty because I don't think people understand how hard it is to be as dominant in that sport as she is. So the story from last night is, ooh, she played a close game. It looks like somebody's going to beat her because no one's as great as her. Right. And, and, and also the referees, salute to all the referees in the NCAA. Get it together, men's league and the women's league. There were some questionable no, no calls in that game and calls in that game for one team or neither, but neither here nor there because it was an epic performance by her and its squad. Yeah. Also, across the, uh, across the pond, if you will, baby, we're calling it across the pond now. Yeah. Juju Watkins in USC, gutsy performance last night, late in the night. They don't get enough uh, eyes from the East Coast because they have that window. It's so late, like yeah. LeBron and them, and them, and them girls. But yeah. it's <laughs> It was a great performance well by her. And then Gino tried to insert Paige in the best mm. player of yeah, the year conversation last night, which is, oh, she's Blast. the best player in the league. Yeah, you feel me? me? Salute to me. Gino, but you, brother, are tripping because yeah. there are girls out here who deserve that. But salute to Paige. You're doing a wonderful job. Yeah. Okay, uh, Lucy Lesso. Uh, everyone <laughs> loves Lucy, but she's grifting a bit. It's like, I've got to get to Iowa and want to eat ice cream. Right, like what? I've got to, I've got to be part of the media. And and what it it it, it Tony, you look, you look like you appreciate the grift. Like you I look, always appreciate a good grift. You always have to have something in your back pocket, Dano. That's the thing. We we want to be a part of this story. Lucy's there. What kind of content? She's doing great work. She what ate, she was eating <laughs> ice cream. She was, she was in a bar. I've denied, I've denied the allegations. She, Lucy was mentioning in that video several times how hard she was working on this video. Exactly. It's hard. Also, that. Lucy is from Iowa. Yeah. Well, she went to the school, so her heart is on the court. She's from and that North Carolina. Was too close. Yeah. You feel me? She couldn't get snapped in. Yeah. She was worried. I love her. Well, I'll be, I'll be happy to let you guys know that I reached out to Lucy to see if she'll be joining us today to recap great games. Good game. executive Everybody's producer work. Right Good. Yeah, so. Rule with an iron fist. Yeah, well done, Billy. Is she actually going to join us? No, she said she's not going to. She's oh, flying today. But damn. I reached out. So yeah, She's tired from that other yeah. video. Right. She got flights to catch. Yeah. She's got the giant imaging. Do, that we, ha- do we have yeah. something from her work over there? Meadowlark Media know. paid all sorts of money for the Iowa correspondent imaging so that everywhere yeah. she landed. Look, man, didn't we already reveal that like, in Iowa one time, like a drone was flying over? We were trying to get our exclusive. Allegedly. 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 Salute to John Allegedly. 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 Do you have the Iowa correspondent? Lucy Rodine, Iowa correspondent. Maybe tomorrow. We'll what? See. Of her eating ice cream? Video. <laughs> Replay the other video. It was so good. Free Epe. This man consistently makes me think about baseball, makes me happy to think about baseball. I associate him with baseball more than a great many players who have ever played the game, and I'm sure that's one of his greatest legacy prides. Uh, Tim Kirchner is also a friend, friend of the show, friend of mine, and he has had an unspeakably hard time that he would never complain about publicly uh, at home because it, to do so would be undignified, but he has dealt with grief and loss and stuff that really hurts. And I was thrilled the other day when he called me and he told me that he was starting a podcast with his son, Jeff. Is this a great game or what? New episodes are going to be every Tuesday. He is late to the podcast game. His background is and he doesn't know how technology works. But for him to be able to do this with his son uh, uh, late in 
in his career reminds me of what I was able to do with my father on television. And so I was just really happy for Tim that you will get to spend a day a week with your son talking baseball because that sounds, if you ask me, how Tim Kirkshin would want his grandfatherly years to go if he had imagined them 40 years ago. What do you mean I get to talk baseball with my kid one day a week and they're going to pay me for it? Right. And that's exactly why I'm doing this, Dan. And the reason I'm doing it is because it's my son and I love him. He's also a genius, a magician with technology. So I tweeted the other day for like the first time in two years because I'm so bad at it. But he set up the whole tweet for me, which included video. I couldn't have done that in a million years. So he set it up for me on my phone and he said, Dad, on Monday morning, all you have to do is press this button, post, and then you'll be on. Otherwise, because friends of mine said, how did you know how to do that? The answer is, I don't know how to do anything. So he is helping me through that. I will provide baseball content and he will provide content on all sorts of other things since I only know about baseball and a little bit about basketball and nothing else. Let me explain something else to you, Kirchin. What your son will be able to do is cash on cash in on grandpa's brand in baseball from every <laughs> angle because he simply knows how to use Twitter. The, the crew here is laughing at you, Tim. Uh, Juju and Tony are laughing at you because you think he's a technological genius because he can clip something. Nice. Because he can type Damn. stuff on the tweet and then send it, I think. <laughs> Don't get access to your bank part. accounts, you know I'm what I mean, Tim? I'm just laughing at this man's background. Like, what's behind this yes. curtain that's so Tim, bad? Tim, <laughs> it's not because your son's a genius. It's because you're a fool. Damn. I'm an idiot. I'm the that. first one to tell you that. I don't know anything. And he's in country music talk. And and he's thrown, you know, country. I called it country Western music until about three months ago when he finally said, Dad, that's not what it's called anymore. It's country music. So I'm going to learn something about that. Uh, among many things, while we do this show. So it's not just going to be pure baseball, me telling stories. It's going to be back and forth, me and my son. And hopefully I'll learn something from all the things that he knows that I know. Well, hopefully Jeff will learn something from our show because when it's called Is This a Great Game or What, the, sh the, the name of it should be I'm going to take what's left of grandpa's uh, money or grandpa's <laughs> knowledge or uh, that he is going to use the Kirchin brand to branch out into podcasts when you normally don't care about podcasts. Certainly you don't listen to them and you don't know how to download them. I don't know how to download them. I don't know how to listen to them. I don't know how to do anything. And you're right. I'm trying to help my son, who, by the way, doesn't need any help. He's doing really well in Philadelphia as a morning talk show, music country music host i'm just doing this because it's something i always wanted to do he's my son we have great chemistry we have great fun together and that's the only reason i'm doing it. if he cashes in on me if we make any money on this he's getting it not me i don't care about that all right i want to get in the bidding i want to get in the bidding for this podcast i don't know if i can buy it from espn it's kind of you're just announcing it I'm, this might be tampering but i'd like Whoa. to get in on bidding on whatever it is this podcast becomes because on one of the episodes you called me the other day and you were giggling uh, the one time I put you and Mike Shore together at microphones, you talked for 50 straight minutes in a way on South Beach Sessions that people found delightful. One of your first podcasts is going to be him and you just geeking out on the passion of baseball, right? People love listening to you on baseball, and you're like a kid opening baseball cards when you talk to Mike Schur. Right. And we open baseball cards on uh, several segments where they just open a card and my son says, all right, tell the story about this guy. Mike Shore was so great. I told him we only need 20 to 30 minutes. We went 45. We could have gone four hours and 45 minutes. And that's how great he was. It wasn't even, Dan, a question and answer period. It was a three-way conversation between three people who love baseball, two of us who are unhealthily addicted to the game. And Mike told me about three stories that I've never heard before. And he's I do this for a living, and he knows stuff that I don't know about baseball. It's embarrassing, but it was so great. <laughs> he told us a story where Manny Ramirez went to buy a motorcycle, and he didn't think he could afford it because it cost $95,000. So the guy said, Manny, you're a major league player. You can afford this. And he said, okay, I'll pay for it now. 
but I left my wallet at home. And he looked at his buddy who was standing right next to him and said, can I have $95,000? He, he thought he had it on him. That's one of a million stories that Mike, Mike Schur told that made me laugh out loud. Uh, Manny uh, wore a $60 earring and didn't seem to know the value of money because he uh, was in the neighborhood that I had just bought a home in very early in my career. The, 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 the area was just growing out. It was just beginning. It was not expensive land or homes, and he wanted to buy a house there for his family, and he asked his agent, uh, can I afford this house here? And his agent told him, Manny, you can afford the whole bleeping neighborhood. How do you not know? How do you? But but Tim, you've got all sorts of stories like that. Where I, I want to get into the Otani stuff with you, and I want to get into um, some of the elements here of how much was Otani relying on his translator as like an all-purpose person that he trusted with everything, including his bank accounts. Uh, but I want to talk to you about the difficulties players have in transitioning over here because the excuse on Otani can't be as simple as he wasn't familiar with gambling rules and he doesn't know the difference between a DraftKings and uh, and a uh, and a uh, you know a guy named Manny who's running a syndicate. Like w w the the controversy is a weird one, and I don't think I totally understand what he might be guilty of here. Right. And, and I'm with you, too, Dan. I think we need to ask like a million more questions about this. And it really hurt yesterday that no one was allowed to ask a question. I will say, however, he was way more forthcoming than I thought he was going to be. He was angrier, more emotional, more passionate than I thought. I thought he was going to read a canned press release saying, hey, I can't talk about this. We'll talk about it at the proper time. There's an investigation going on. Instead, there were times I felt like he looked up from his script and actually spoke to us. And I think he deserves certainly a little bit of credit for doing that. Now, however, we still have a zillion questions like, where did, how could he not know that $4.5 million was taken from him? How could he not know that his interpreter was doing something like this? Maybe rich people do this all the time. These are the questions I still need to know. But I will tell you, for the most part, and maybe this is my nature, I believed most of what he said yesterday, and others have told me I am completely wrong about that. But I don't know how he could not know what was going on, and those are the questions that need to be answered. Here's the problem with you, Kirkshin, and your eternal niceness. Everyone can get away with everything because the whole steroid thing happened right under your nose. You're a journalist, and the whole thing happened right under your nose. So you're like, I believe Otani. The truth is, I do too. But they can get away with anything on your watch, Kirkshin, because you you love the sport too much. <laughs> look at him. Look how disappointed he is with me. He's, he's, are you mad at me? Did I just actually enrage Tim Kirkshin? No, it happened under your nose, too. Tell it yeah. is. It happened Tell it under is. everyone's right. nose. Wow. The best investigative reporters in the game didn't know this was going on. Look, I'm not going to make any excuses for me. I missed the story badly, as we all did. But you can't just be covering the game, asking a baseball question, and then say, oh, are you doing steroids? It just doesn't work that way. When they brought... You know, Mark Fainaruwada in, and he went undercover for two years. That's how you get the story. That's how you figure this out. No excuses. I missed it. I miss a lot of things. That's the way it works. I've got a two-pronged question, though, because you know more about history and perspective in this realm than a great many of the people who cover anything, never mind just baseball. The weirdness of what happened with an interview that then looked like a cover-up that then becomes massive theft and makes all of this so much worse because you've got a disavowed interview. Can you please take me through where this ranks for you in terms of weird scandal, at least in part because of that weird interview situation? Yeah, this is the strangest, most confusing, most confounding story that I think I've seen in the 40 four years that I have covered. And mainly because, A, we're talking about not just the biggest star in the game, we're talking about the biggest athletic star in sports today and one of the greatest stars in the history of baseball. And Dan, I have never seen a story change as quickly as it did in a 24 hour period from this is what Shohei did, oh no, it's a massive 
theft. That's what confused me. And that's why we're on this and why we need to get to the bottom of it with a million more questions. But I know I have slapped my forehead a hundred times since this story came out. Uh, what happened here? Who can explain this? And we still don't have an explanation, but I still think we got at least a little bit of clarity yesterday that we didn't have the day before. One of the big things, Tim, yesterday that confused me, I guess, was kind of when he was telling the story, and, and if you go by the timeline of how things have been going on, right? Because the fact that is that it was going on in two different countries at the same time, right? In different time zones or whatever. But I think at one point he said yesterday, I didn't really think anything was amiss until after Ipe was talking to the entire clubhouse. He was saying it in English, and I realized something's off here. The thing that I thought was a little strange about that is by the timeline, unless I'm wrong, at that point, Ipe had already conducted the interview. It had been disavowed. And, like, I just don't understand how no one else in Shohei's camp said anything to him. Like, hey, something's going on here. It took until after that conversation in the clubhouse and then a one-on-one -on -one conversation the two of them allegedly had in a hotel where he said, oh, okay, like, something's actually on. Like, how, did, how was no one else in his team kind of telling him, hey, something's happening here. You should be paying attention to this. Yes, I, I'm with you, Billy. Someone should have prepped him before the interpreter addressed the team and said, here's what he's planning on saying in English. We will translate for you if you don't understand. But, you know, Shohei understands more English than most people think. That goes for Ichiro and a lot of other guys who come over. They just choose not to speak because it can get them in more trouble than good. But I'm with you on that. I, that. That's one of many things that I can't comprehend. How is he hearing this for the first time when they're having this club out meeting and he's standing there listening to what the guy is saying? Someone should have prepped him in advance. I mean, is back. I am grateful for his presence. Oddball every day except for Monday. Oddball is, oh, I love that commercial you did. I mean, Oddball, I can feel it getting stronger and stronger. Yes, it's only a matter hey, of time. Yo. <laughs> Jesus. And then we get bigger. Um, I am waiting for you to be a bigger oddball. I am. I am. I want bigger balls around here yeah. in general. There is something, oddball though. Oddball is positively throbbing right now. And you know it. Caleb. <laughs> Caleb. Caleb. My material. Caleb Williams. We could have used it at the end of the last segment. We could have used a stray and you know it as Tony and you lost know it. track of the clock and just started talking about mixed martial arts in a way that was too serious. Back in my day today? Or? Is there a back in my day? There is, actually. Are, hey! What? Were you not going to tell anyone? Tuesday. What? Wait a minute. What? You guys. Tuesday. Guys, Tuesday. it's a Tuesday. Seriously. I don't understand. Wait, that. we've got to do that. There was also, I got to get to Caleb Williams. There's news breaking with <laughs> Caleb Williams. I've got to get to Greg Cody is mad at Tim Kirkshin and me because Tim Kirkshin's podcast with his son just got so much promotion. Seriously. I mean, the Greg Cody show with Greg Cody and Chris Cody invented the father and son podcast. And and yet I can't get a shout out on this show. I mean, I'm sitting right here. He's got a point. Mark Jackson has a podcast with his son now. Seriously, it's, this is all the rage now. Father where, son where podcast. Are, where are my royalty checks at? Okay, he's mad at Tim Kershaw. We'll get to that in just a second. Uh, we've got to update our March Sadness tournament as well. But I was hugely surprised, and I don't know the discomforts of this. Juju, are you surprised in any way that a means father watches this show and a means an adult? He, he, he's a front office person. Uh, look at Billy yawning right there. Our parents, nobody <laughs> here. It's unrelated no, to this. Our, our parents here do not watch what we're doing here. A mean with a grandfathered aged parent um, who I don't know why he would be watching this show or either. his son at all. And I certainly can't see him understanding what you're doing here, throwing away your career. Oh, so, wouldn't I mean, he be a father aged father? No, he's, gra he's grandfather aged. Really? He's a grandfather. No, is that right? Greg's right. Thank hmm. you. But my guess is, how old is now your you know how old is your dad? My my, da my dad's about your dad's age, so he's almost eighty. Wow. Yeah, yeah, but he's, that's a that's a dad's age too. Yeah, he's still dad. Yeah, but you got to be. It's kind of a prereq. Why don't you just say the age yeah. rather than yeah. just confuse me? Because uh, grandfathers can be very young these yeah. days. Because I mean, even though sometimes he sounds like a child, is an old person, and his sounds father is wild. much older. Just wow. reveal the age. A child. Kurt Russell's playing ninety-three-year-olds out here. Sounds like a child. That wow. sounds like a, a blast. 
<laughs> I'm just saying that when you go to the All Star game and get drunk and don't produce any footage, some people well, can say, say that's that the now. Behavior. He listens to the show, Dan. Does he watch the show only when you're on or every day? So this is what happened. Oh, I, yeah, was, I was, I was. Only- <laughs> I love the old guy. <laughs> Only on Tuesdays. I love Cody and his back in my day. Thank you. Billy, my, my dad, and I, I don't know if your dad is of this age, but my dad is of the age where he watches YouTube videos on his phone very loudly. My dad's not 80. Okay. That, my dad is at that age, right, where everything he watches is full blast. And so I hear it. Sometimes it's news, and sometimes it's, it's soccer highlights, and sometimes it's something, a little funny skit or whatever. So I'm listening one day, and I'm like, huh, these voices sound real familiar. What, what's he listening to? And then I realize, oh, he's listening to us. On a day when you weren't there? When, on a day when I wasn't there. But then I thought, maybe it's just one of those videos, right? So then <laughs> the other day he says, oh, they really made fun of you about that shot, huh? And I said, what are you talking about, father? He's like, because I thought maybe, just maybe he just caught it off like Facebook or something like that. He's like, yeah, Dan and those guys, they were really getting into you on that. And I was like, oh, you, you watch the show now? Is this a thing? Yeah. So now, now we have to be careful. Yeah. CeeLo Green became a grandfather at the age of 35. Wow. wow. My mommy that, watches this show. The, my mommy watches this show every does day. Does she? Especially every, well, she watches it when I'm on it. But Yeah, my dad's the same. Yeah. yeah. My father would be 108. I'm just saying. Would he watch the show? Yeah, would he watch yeah, the show? Yeah, he, he is right now. From heaven. Yeah. Kiefer yeah, Sutherland right. was under 40. What? Wow. I was nominated and I achieved the 40 under 40 award uh, with help from Roy Bellamy this, this year. Wow, Salute congrats. Roy Bellamy. There I you go. I never made a big deal about it, but since no. we're talking about 40s. 40 under go. 40? No, that's, that's, that's wow. pretty big. Uh, again, your mom must be real proud. Yes, sir. Thank my, you so much. My dad is not because I haven't been nominated for I was, in Suey's. I was at church the other day, and the priest said that he baptized someone and baptized their grandparents. I immediately turned to someone sitting next to me and go, he's lying. <laughs> it just seems impossible. In the church. I did say it in the church. Lord if mercy. anything, it seems like a good place to be forgiven, right? But, like, come on. That's that, efficient. that was a whopper, That's right? That's a place where you're efficient? It, yeah. Hold on. <laughs> is, is that the best place to oh, lie? Oh, yeah. You go, if you're going to murder someone, do it right before you go to confession. Because then it's Boom. just like you turn around right here. Absolved. Was it Father Eddie? <laughs> no, that's a whole other. It is allegedly. I'm not sure that Juju can. Uh, th- you're talking about being efficient in how it is you sin, so that you can sin quickly and Cor- get correct. it immediately absolved. So just do it. In, just do it in the I confessional box. Yeah. Speaking of efficiency, we haven't gotten to any of the topics you were crunched for time on. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Juju. I appreciate it. Uh, but one of them was his dad watches the show because nice. I'm confused by it. But let's get to Greg Cody's back in my day because I didn't even know we had one of those. And now it is time to take a trip down memory lane. Here's your guy, Greg Cody, with Back in My Day. Okay, here it is. Sorry. Adultery! That oh, is- yeah! We are back. I that is waited the, for this one. They, wait, 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 wait. By accident, what just happened? I think that's the record. Roy, for years, has been counting the amount of time that he pregnant pauses there. That was the record because he was looking for his papers. Because we, he was surprised that he has it back in my day. <laughs> I got a lot of papers here. I'm a busy man. Adultery. First, an important disclaimer: this back in my day is absolutely not an essay born of personal experience. And if it were, what was the chance I'd actually admit it on a national podcast? Okay, let's be honest about something inherently dishonest. Adultery, infidelity, cheating, whatever you want to call it, was so much easier back before technology came along and ruined everything. Or rather, so I'd imagine the clandestine (laughs) Casanovas would lament. Cheating was easy once. You just had to make sure you weren't doing it around friends, neighbors, or coworkers. So if you lived in Mayberry, the two of you drove up to Mount Pilot, got a corner booth at the bar, then a room at the Notel Motel, and called it a night. You were blessedly incommunicado. There were no cell phones allowing any busybody snoop to record or photograph you. You were completely out of touch until you dropped a dime in a payphone. There was no CCTV closed-circuit cameras spying on every movement you made, no facial ID technology, no TMZ with hired spies around every corner, no social media splaying wide everyone's personal life. 
Now, every text message and voicemail exchange is retrievable. You think delete search history actually does that? Ha <laughs> ha, your naivete is so cute. Back in my day, you wrote a fake name in the motel guest book. The board clerk said you're in room nine, Dr. McGillicuddy, and you went on your merry way. Now there'd be an unblinking ring camera above the door ratting on you. It isn't just relationship cheats who have it tough these days. How the heck do criminals get away with anything? Snatch somebody's purse on a city street and see how fast the cops shout out closed-circuit images of you in the act all across social media with close-ups, nine different angles, and slow motion. You think that old-timey ski mask works? There's technology to unmask you now. The day is coming when we will all have a computer chip in our noggin allowing the law to trace and catalog our every step. The cell phone in your pocket is doing the same thing today, bugling your whereabouts 24-7. Modern-day debauchers and lotharios have only two choices. You either give up your cheating ways or you hopelessly bemoan technology and understand that today a smartphone would be pinging your exact location in that dark corner booth as you swig your third Manhattan. (laughs) I'm Greg Cody, and that's how it was back in my day. Uh, the No Tell Motel, is that a Greg Cody original, or is that... Uh, that's on T-shirts uh, beginning today in the Greg Cody merch store. Hey. See, it's all interconnected. No, the No Tell Motel is, uh, is a known entity. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a That's a thing that yeah, people from your day, the thing. adulterous people yeah. from yeah. your day would talk about. The yeah. other thing there... Allegedly. Because the they don't tell. It's the, a motor lodge. The motor lodge with the shuffleboard cord out front. Ah, do you guys know what was most back in my day about that entire thing? Uh, because I don't think he caught that. I did not realize. Bugling? All right, no. the word bugle. I've yeah. never heard the word bugle used besides was describing jeans. Thank you. <laughs> the bugle boy. Greg Cody remembering a time where there was a payphone that you put 10 cents oh. into. Yes, that's true. I, I'm... I'm not familiar with that payphone. Dan. That payphone, I did not know it existed in this country, a payphone that took merely 10 cents. Yep. I, I remember when you could put a dime in a payphone. That's right. And if you were making a long-distance call, the operator would interrupt the call to tell you you had to deposit more, more money. money. Yeah. Yep. Oh, I remember Carrot Top had a commercial call, 1-800-COLLECT, where you didn't even yeah. need no money. You just dialed 1-800-COLLECT, wow. and you charged the hell out of whoever you're calling. I just yeah. realized yeah. the concept of collect calls for yeah. a certain generation. 10, 10, 3, 2, 1. Yeah. Must blow the What am mind. I collecting? What are they collecting? Besides money? That's it? Money. Well, then collect. This, this is how it works, Tony. You pick up the phone. You don't have any money. You call 1-800-COLLECT. They say, what number are you trying to reach? I'm trying to reach 555, whatever, whatever, right? Then they say, you say your name. And you say, hey, this is Tony. And then the person on the other end would have to accept the charges for the call. It's yeah. like a prison call. Yeah, yes. Exactly but yeah, but here, exactly. here was or the trick. Or you say, Bob had a baby, it's a boy. There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you just say, what's your name? And you just say, oh, blah, 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 and then you just hang up. So then somebody else would be on another payphone somewhere? No, or? like no. you'd be calling someone's house. House, okay. Like, How'd you come pick me up from school? Yep, there you go. Uh, <laughs> can you guys find for me that Carrot Top commercial? Let's just play it uh, unwatched, unedited. Just play as fast as you can the entirety of that Carrot Top commercial so we can see what Amin is talking about. Oh, it's 1-800-CALL-82. Young Carrot Top. Yeah. Oh, my God, look at the life in his face. It's <laughs> an age to day. <laughs> That's not true. You guys thought he was on a bender in this Las is before Vegas. He, whoa. Before he hit the gym. Whoa. In confidence. That did tell him. In confidence. <laughs> Who wasn't, by the way? <laughs> what happened with Caleb Williams? Uh, the internet is, he was at a women's tournament game, and he flashed his painted nails and his, his phone case, and people are saying it appears like he's wearing lipstick and you know the the internet's having a go at him the first mention is man colin coward's about to f this guy up tomorrow <laughs> salute to caleb i'm proud of you you know what i mean i like it no you man like it? Yeah. <laughs> it's like a very like a russell brand type of motif yeah, yeah, living his life salute to the young brother russell brand huh um you know i would just say this right now that's look at me louis behavior like i got i'm going to a women's game what should i wear lipstick and pink nails, of course, and a pink phone case. Look at me, Louie. <laughs> that's Monty Williams, the original Look at Me, Louie. You think that's Monty Williams' behavior? That's solidarity. All right, so earlier in the show, we had the March Sadness bracket, the region for songs. This next region is for the club. We got club sounds here. 
And it's there's some intense battles going on here. Is it as as poorly hotly, seated? Yes. Is it okay? All right. Well, that's debatable. It, is it absolutely as poorly seated? All right. It's, let's start here with a two seed. We have Dabo Sweeney. It was a very popular sound this this year. A caller complaining about Clemson, and Dabo was just not having it. Why are we paying you eleven point five million dollars to go four and four? And it's not just this year. It's been it's been just a refusal to accept you can you can have all your opinions that you want, right? I don't know how old you are. Don't really care. Let me tell you something. We won eleven games last year, and you're part of the problem. To be honest with you, because that is part of the problem. There's people like you that be sick. All you do is the appreciation. The expectation is greater than the appreciation, and that's the problem. Am I perfect? No. I'm far from it. And I am a man of faith. Absolutely. I'm 63 years old. And there ain't one thing in my life. I, I, I've been a part of failure many times. But there ain't one thing in my life that I've ever failed at. Tyler. It was, really just a, it was really just building up to that last yeah. clip of him just being just the most dismissive name you could ever say about somebody. <laughs> so that is going up against 15 seed. Michigan coach, interim coach, crying on the field when Jim Harbaugh was not there. Well, I thank the Lord. Well, I thank Coach Harbaugh. I fucking love you, man. I love the shit out of you, man. This is for you. For this university, the president, our AD. We got the best players, best university, best alumni in the country. Love you guys. These fucking guys right here. These guys right here, man. These guys did it. These guys did it, man. Juju, correct me if I'm wrong. That's reminiscent, right? <laughs> Can't hardly wait. It's all about the memories, man. Brother, that was a crocodile tear coming out of that brother face. And Preston? Let's... Preston Myers? <laughs> Let me remind you, March Sadness is presented by Get Your Guide. Yeah. Discover over 100,000 unforgettable travel experiences in the U.S. and around the world at GetYourGuide.com. We keep it moving here in the club region. Stephen A. Smith went on an epic rant about Jason Whitlock. Oh, We're not going to play the entire thing. This is a one seed, right? This is a three seed. And this is just his dismount, and it's one of the best clips of the year easily. You fat piece of shit. And that wasn't a top two seed. And that is competing with Todd Bowles just really not making much sense. Coach, uh, looking forward towards um, Detroit. Um, the weather has been a factor in some of the playoff games, even for the most prepared teams. Uh, today, it's uh, 13 in uh, Detroit, which doesn't compare to some of the temperatures it's in the top two. Any special plans to acclimate the team to not only uh, endure, but perform in those kind of frigid temperatures should you face them in Detroit? You do know we play indoors, right? They got a dome. I don't know. Um, no, nothing planned. We're, we're indoors. He was making fun of the reporters yeah, there. I said Todd Bowles. I, I, there's a lot. My head's spinning okay. in here. I'm sorry. We're chucking a little lot That's in okay. here. It's I mean. okay. It's okay. It's, it's drinking out of a fire hose, right? That's what Dan says. Hmm. <laughs> Let's sure. go in next. Oh, wow. Let's go next to hmm. five Ad versus 12. Adventurous things. The five C. This is a great, a great clip of Paul McCartney complaining yeah. about Foreigner not being in the Hall of Fame. Foreigner? Not in the Hall of Fame? What the f***? It's the that's the best clip we have. Five it's seed a, <laughs> fraud, by the way, McCartney. It's a little power because he's dead. Good after all these no, years, though, man. No, Why is he a fraud? Good. He's a fraud, man. I, he, what? he he was talking about uh, Phil Collins back in the day. I didn't like it, so that was the day. I, back when Lawrence from, Olivier was alive. Yeah, man. Like, watch, <laughs> yourself. watch yourself. You don't want thin eyes there, buddy. Who's who, who's uh, the twelve seed? Paul's is under. Mayor of New York Eric Adams just stepping in it? Mr. Mayor, we've come to the end of what was a very eventful 2023, right? <laughs> so when you look at the totality of the year, if you had to describe it, and it's tough to do, in one word, what would that word be and tell me why? Uh, New York. Uh, this is a place where every day you wake up, uh, you could experience everything from a plane crashing into our trade center to a, a person who's celebrating a new business that's open. Uh, this is a very, very complicated city, and that's why it's the greatest city on the globe. Five twelve upset rears its head again because boys. 
<laughs> Eric Adams, if he don't move on to the next round, I'm going to question these listeners for sure. All right. 8-9 matchup. We have Lucy with one of her most epic quotes of the year, I would say. I was getting bitches left and right. <laughs> That might be the favorite to come out the whole God, it's so good. I was. That's Guess what? One of them texted me back this weekend, asked if I could hey. hang out. Hey. I'm busy, though. <laughs> Sorry, Lexi. And that is competing with a nine seed. It's a clip of me talking about my wife, and I'm worried that she might be cheating on me. Yeah, Can I be vulnerable for a second? Billy shared, and he was vulnerable there, so I want to be I want to be vulnerable. Oh, boy. Um, if you find out your spouse or significant other is playing Wordle with somebody... That you were unaware there is it is catching your wife in a wordle game the same as catching your wife at lunch is what uh, I want to ask. What better get on that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How yeah. can you, you play wordle with someone else? Don't you play wordle with someone? No. Is it a my, maybe words, I'm, words I'm, with I'm, maybe my name? Maybe words I'm saying words with friends. Words with friends. Yeah. Sorry. No. Oh yeah, no, you should be the concerned. game where you send words. You back have and forth. generally trouble with words. Is it yes. a, is words it a dude? with friends with benefits? Yeah, you should be. Is it a dude? It is a dude. Oh yeah. Okay. Be concerned. Words with friends with benefits. Like like, what's the line? Where's the line on like what's going on there? Well, you're saying, but this is what you're saying. All right. Yeah, Lucy's gonna beat me there. Lucy's gonna beat me there. Feeling real good. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? Did I tell you about the seating or did I tell yeah, you about the seating you know beforehand? What? I told you. Yeah. Tony, you might be on to something. Something's not right with this tournament. All right, we're moving on here, and this is a one seed. The one seed in the club region, and it is a member of our show's grandma. I'm seeing the arrangement that Jessica's grandmother got in queue here that we're about to play, and it is a really nice-looking arrangement, and I have my regrets. Okay, but let's play for the audience. Uh, Jessica, does this need any other setup? Because I'm no, telling you, in reading the transcript, I was just made so happy. How does this woman sound? Please tell me she's got a, a thick, thick accent, and she sounds extra old. She sounds like she's from Chicago, and she grew up in Little Italy. Let me hear this. <laughs> I got the... Jessica... Holy sh! I got the most gorgeous roses. I don't think I ever got that many roses in my whole life. Certainly not from your lovely grandfather, God. And may his soul rest in peace. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my God, they are beautiful. I'm I'm flabbergasted. I mean, holy sh! I don't know what it's for, but I love you for. Thank you. You made my day. I mean, they are gorgeous. Holy. I mean, that's a good one, Steve. I mean, that's. Oh, come on. That's that run on sentence that ends with certainly from your lovely grandfather. God right, rest his soul. soul. I mean, come on. <laughs> No. That's like a four seed. I, yeah, I'm, I'm, oh, it's definitely no. like yeah. it's it's hosting. It's hosting a game. It's hosting but, yeah. for sure. Come on, salute the one eight hundred flowers at that. Always, well, yeah, hell yeah. Sixteen seed is who is competing with that, and that is David Sampson with just oh, this is the one a, a quick, short little clip that we all enjoyed very much. Go pee pee. Hey, sixteen just, seed. Hey. That's a sixteen hey. seed. Go pee pee. Let me let me do it again. Let me for, for the people in the back. That's St. Peter's. Peter's. Yeah. yeah, we can hear. Oh, that's uh, go pee pee. That's the movie I'm doing for Cinema Folk. Stop. <laughs> yes, that's St. Peter's. 16 seed. I'm predicting it's go pee pee. Go pee pee. That was one of the greatest right. quotes of the year. We're making that a 16 seed. What the hell is Cinema All right, we got Thank a four you. seed now, and this is another one from Jessica. This is not her grandma this time, but some of Jessica's best work in the club this year was misogynistic Bane. Face. I don't like Smitty either. <laughs> Women stay home in the kitchen where they belong. And that is competing with the time that I threatened to kill Santa. That's... I threatened to kill Santa. Whoa! <laughs> kill? Like kill murder? Him? It needed to be done. Like that it's not bad enough that that she has to witness Santa dead in a pool of his own blood. If you pee in this bed it's... one more time. Whoa. Well, it's my bed. She now has to imagine her father in jail for murder. How'd your wife take that? Famously for murdering Santa. That's right. Bruh, I predict this. Misogynistic Bane will win, go all the way. Making a deep run, I think. Yeah. Well, I agree with that. The, win the region? The the national championship. The national championship? Oh, I don't no way. Think. Oh, I think Over nice hat. You're crazy. Oh, it's in the same region as that? No, oh, no, but no. it's it's going to eventually they get gotta, there. Oh, they're going to win the championship. Never mind. I feel like nice hat. 
And misogynistic man will be the championship. Okay, round. so you're saying they're gonna win the region? Unless they're yeah. in the same side of the bracket, gotcha. then they can't. But it'll be the final four. Yeah, and semantics. Our okay. final matchup of the day in the March ma- in the March Sadness Tournament, which is presented by Get Your Guide. Discover over a hundred thousand unforgettable travel experiences in the U.S. and around the world at GetYourGuide.com. Nice. Guy that got stuck in the vase. He is a seven seed. <laughs> You got it, Connor. You got it. All right, it's a guy stuck in a vase. No, the most underrated part about that is that uh, Salt and Pepper Shoop is played in the background. I, that's all I heard. Was <laughs> shoop, 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 shoop. So the guy stuck in the vase is competing against. Hold one. on, hold on. Okay. That's a seven seed. That is a seven seed. This seeds. I'll tell you what. It but is competing against a 10 seed, Charles Barkley, one of my favorite clips, him trying to say Sergey Bobrovsky. And I'm going to just tell y'all something. Sergey Bobovka, this is the goalie for the Panthers. <laughs> Sergey Bobovka. Oh, man. So that is our March Sadness update for the day. Make sure to go to our social channels and vote for all these winners. If you're not happy with the seedings, you can control who moves on. So go to our socials and vote. Juju's got misogynistic bane in the championship. It's yes, gonna, I do. It's going it, to final First, four. maybe nice hat. Nice hat. <laughs> misogynistic bane. I, I think and Lucy, I get field. bitches left and right, is a tough, tough opponent. It's a tough opponent. Dare I say, I'm just, I'm predicting how. He hasn't the, talked to anybody, by the way. Vote. Yeah, I haven't talked to anybody. Or do, I, do I not know anything, <laughs> brother? But I just know the post. I got my finger on the post of the Lebertard crowd. Yo. I think, you know, Misogynistic Bane was one of the, the great revelations of last year, new character. But for the next year, I want this character to continue to grow. <laughs> Muslim Mike Greeny. <laughs> Muslim Greeny. Wait, jail Muslim Enlightened Greeny. Greeny. <laughs> Prison Muslim Greeny. It's, <laughs> I, I keep thinking of the dude in Don't Be a Man of Swan, my brother. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that might be one of the most fun things we've come up with in the last I don't know how many months. The idea of Greeny in prison for just an hour would convert to Islam. That's how you know this thing is rigged. No me in this. (laughs) Stop the count. I was getting bitches left and right. (laughs)